Paper 112. Personality Survival. The evolutionary planets are the spheres of human origin, the initial worlds of the ascending mortal career. Urantia is your starting point. Here, you and your divine thought adjuster are joined in temporary union. You have been endowed with a perfect guide. Therefore, if you will sincerely run the race of time and gain the final goal of faith, the reward of the ages shall be yours. You will be eternally united with your indwelling adjuster. Then will begin your real life, the ascending life, to which your present mortal state is but the vestibule. Then will begin your exalted and progressive mission as finaliters in the eternity which stretches out before you. And throughout all these successive ages and stages of evolutionary growth, there is one part of you that remains absolutely unaltered, and that is personality, permanence in the presence of change. While it would be presumptuous to attempt the definition of personality, it may prove helpful to recount some of the things which are known about personality. 1. Personality is that quality in reality which is bestowed by the Universal Father himself or by the conjoint actor acting for the Father. 2. It may be bestowed upon any living energy system which includes mind or spirit. 3. It is not wholly subject to the fetters of antecedent causation. It is relatively creative or co-creative. 4. When bestowed upon evolutionary material creatures, it causes spirit to strive for the mastery of energy matter through the mediation of mind. 5. Personality, while devoid of identity, can unify the identity of any living energy system. 6. It discloses only qualitative response to the personality circuit in contradistinction to the three energies which show both qualitative and quantitative response to gravity. 7. Personality is changeless in the presence of change. 8. It can make a gift to God, dedication of the free will to the doing of the will of God. 9. It is characterized by morality, awareness of relativity of relationship with other persons. It discerns conduct levels and choosingly discriminates between them. 10. Personality is unique, absolutely unique. It is unique in time and space. It is unique in eternity and on paradise. It is unique when bestowed. There are no duplicates. It is unique during every moment of existence. It is unique in relation to God. He is no respecter of persons, but neither does he add them together, for they are non-addable. They are associable, but non-totalable. 11. Personality responds directly to other personality presence. 12. It is one thing which can be added to spirit, thus illustrating the primacy of the Father in relation to the Son. Mind does not have to be added to spirit. 13. Personality may survive mortal death with identity in the surviving soul. The adjuster and the personality are changeless. The relationship between them, in the soul, is nothing but change, continuing evolution. And if this change, growth, ceased, the soul would cease. 14. Personality is uniquely conscious of time, and this is something other than the time perception of mind or spirit. 1. Personality and Reality Personality is bestowed by the Universal Father upon his creatures as a potentially eternal endowment. Such a divine gift is designed to function on numerous levels and in successive universe situations, ranging from the lowly finite to the highest absinite, even to the borders of the absolute. Personality thus performs on three cosmic planes, or in three universe phases. 1. Position Status Personality functions equally efficiently in the local universe, in the super-universe, and in the central universe. Two. Meaning status. Personality performs effectively on the levels of the finite, the absinite, and even as impinging upon the absolute. 3. Value status. Personality can be experientially realized in the progressive realms of the material, the moral, and the spiritual. Personality has a perfected range of cosmic dimensional performance. The dimensions of finite personality are three 
and they are roughly functional as follows. 1. Length represents direction and nature of progression, movement through space, and according to time, evolution. 2. Vertical depth embraces the organismal drives and attitudes, the varying levels of self-realization, and the general phenomenon of reaction to environment. 3. Breadth embraces the domain of coordination, association, and selfhood organization. The type of personality bestowed upon Urantia mortals has a potentiality of seven dimensions of self-expression or person realization. These dimensional phenomena are realizable as three on the finite level, three on the absinite level, and one on the absolute level. On sub-absolute levels, this seventh or totality dimension is experienceable as the fact of personality. This supreme dimension is an associable absolute and, while not infinite, is dimensionally potential for sub-infinite penetration of the absolute. The finite dimensions of personality have to do with cosmic length, depth, and breadth. Length denotes meaning, depth signifies value, breadth embraces insight the capacity to experience unchallengeable consciousness of cosmic reality. On the Marancha level, all of these finite dimensions of the material level are greatly enhanced, and certain new dimensional values are realizable. All these enlarged dimensional experiences of the Marancha level are marvelously articulated with the supreme or the personality dimension through the influence of Mota, and also because of the contribution of Marancha mathematics. Much trouble experienced by mortals in their study of human personality could be avoided if the finite creature would remember that dimensional levels and spiritual levels are not coordinated in experiential personality realization. Life is really a process which takes place between the organism, selfhood, and its environment. The personality imparts value of identity and meanings of continuity to this organismal environmental association. Thus it will be recognized that the phenomenon of stimulus response is not a mere mechanical process since the personality functions as a factor in the total situation. It is ever true that mechanisms are innately passive, organisms inherently active. Physical life is a process taking place not so much within the organism as between the organism and the environment and every such process tends to create and establish organismal patterns of reaction to such an environment. And all such directive patterns are highly influential in goal choosing. It is through the mediation of mind that the self and the environment establish meaningful contact. The ability and willingness of the organism to make such significant contacts with environment, response to a drive, represents the attitude of the whole personality. Personality cannot very well perform in isolation. Man is innately a social creature. He is dominated by the craving of belongingness. It is literally true. No man lives unto himself. But the concept of the personality as the meaning of the whole of the living and functioning creature means much more than the integration of relationships. It signifies the unification of all factors of reality as well as coordination of relationships. Relationships exist between two objects, but three or more objects eventuate a system, and such a system is much more than just an enlarged or complex relationship. This distinction is vital, for in a cosmic system the individual members are not connected with each other except in relation to the whole and through the individuality of the whole. In the human organism, the summation of its parts constitutes selfhood, individuality but such a process has nothing whatever to do with personality, which is the unifier of all these factors as related to cosmic realities. In aggregations, parts are added. In systems, parts are arranged. Systems are significant because of organization, positional values. In a good system, all factors are in cosmic position. In a bad system, something is either missing or displaced, deranged. In the human system, it is the personality which unifies all activities and in turn imparts the qualities of identity and creativity. 2. The Self 
it would be helpful in the study of selfhood to remember 1. that physical systems are subordinate 2. that intellectual systems are coordinate 3. that personality is superordinate 4. that the indwelling spiritual force is potentially directive in all concepts of selfhood, it should be recognized that the fact of life comes first, its evaluation or interpretation later. The human child first lives and subsequently thinks about his living. In the cosmic economy, insight precedes foresight. The universe fact of God's becoming man has forever changed all meanings and altered all values of human personality. In the true meaning of the word, Love connotes mutual regard of whole personalities, whether human or divine, or human and divine. Parts of the self may function in numerous ways, thinking, feeling, wishing, but only the coordinated attributes of the whole personality are focused in intelligent action, and all of these powers are associated with the spiritual endowment of the mortal mind when a human being sincerely and unselfishly loves another being, human or divine. All mortal concepts of reality are based on the assumption of the actuality of human personality. All concepts of superhuman realities are based on the experience of the human personality with and in the cosmic realities of certain associated spiritual entities and divine personalities. Everything non-spiritual in human experience, excepting personality, is a means to an end. Every true relationship of mortal man with other persons human or divine, is an end in itself. And such fellowship with the personality of deity is the eternal goal of universe ascension. The possession of personality identifies man as a spiritual being since the unity of selfhood and the self-consciousness of personality are endowments of the supermaterial world. The very fact that a mortal materialist can deny the existence of supermaterial realities in and of itself demonstrates the presence and indicates the working of spirit synthesis and cosmic consciousness in his human mind. There exists a great cosmic gulf between matter and thought, and this gulf is immeasurably greater between material mind and spiritual love. Consciousness, much less self-consciousness, cannot be explained by any theory of mechanistic electronic association or materialistic energy phenomena. As mind pursues reality to its ultimate analysis, matter vanishes to the material senses but may still remain real to mind. When spiritual insight pursues that reality which remains after the disappearance of matter and pursues it to an ultimate analysis, it vanishes to mind, but the insight of spirit can still perceive cosmic realities and supreme values of a spiritual nature. Accordingly, does science give way to philosophy? while philosophy must surrender to the conclusions inherent in genuine spiritual experience. Thinking surrenders to wisdom, and wisdom is lost in enlightened and reflective worship. In science, the human self observes the material world. Philosophy is the observation of this observation of the material world. Religion, true spiritual experience, is the experiential realization of the cosmic reality of the observation of the observation of all this relative synthesis of the energy materials of time and space. To build a philosophy of the universe on an exclusive materialism is to ignore the fact that all things material are initially conceived as real in the experience of human consciousness. The observer cannot be the thing observed. Evaluation demands some degree of transcendence of the thing which is evaluated. In time, thinking leads to wisdom, and wisdom leads to worship. In eternity, worship leads to wisdom, and wisdom eventuates in the finality of thought. The possibility of the unification of the evolving self is inherent in the qualities of its constitutive factors, the basic energies, the master tissues, the fundamental chemical overcontrol, the supreme ideas, the supreme motives, the supreme goals and the divine spirit of paradise bestowal, the secret of the self-consciousness of man's spiritual nature. The purpose of cosmic evolution is to achieve unity of personality through increasing spirit dominance, volitional response to the teaching and leading of the thought adjuster. Personality, both human and superhuman, 
is characterized by an inherent cosmic quality which may be called the evolution of dominance, the expansion of the control of both itself and its environment. An ascending one-time human personality passes through two great phases of increasing volitional dominance over the self and in the universe. 1. The pre-finaliter or God-seeking experience of augmenting the self-realization through a technique of identity expansion and actualization together with cosmic problem-solving and consequent universe mastery. 2. The post-finaliter or God-revealing experience of the creative expansion of self-realization through revealing the supreme being of experience to the God-seeking intelligences who have not yet attained the divine levels of God-likeness. Descending personalities attain analogous experiences through their various universe adventures as they seek for enlarged capacity for ascertaining and executing the divine wills of the supreme, ultimate, and absolute deities. The material self, the ego entity of human identity, is dependent during the physical life on the continuing function of the material life vehicle on the continued existence of the unbalanced equilibrium of energies and intellect, which on Urantia has been given the name life. But selfhood of survival value, selfhood that can transcend the experience of death, is only evolved by establishing a potential transfer of the seat of the identity of the evolving personality from the transient life vehicle, the material body, to the more enduring and immortal nature of the Marantia soul, and on beyond to those levels whereon the soul becomes infused with and eventually attains the status of spirit reality. This actual transfer from material association to Marantia identification is effected by the sincerity, persistence, and steadfastness of the God-seeking decisions of the human creature. 3. The Phenomenon of Death Urantians generally recognize only one kind of death, the physical cessation of life energies, but concerning personality survival, there are really three kinds. 1. Spiritual, soul death. If and when mortal man has finally rejected survival, when he has been pronounced spiritually insolvent, morontially bankrupt, in the conjoint opinion of the adjuster and the surviving seraphim, when such coordinate advice has been recorded on Uversa, and after the censors and their reflective associates have verified these findings, Thereupon do the rulers of Orvantan order the immediate release of the indwelling monitor. But this release of the adjuster in no way affects the duties of the personal or group seraphim concerned with that adjuster-abandoned individual. This kind of death is final in its significance, irrespective of the temporary continuation of the living energies of the physical and mind mechanisms. From the cosmic standpoint, the mortal is already dead. The continuing life merely indicates the persistence of the material momentum of cosmic energies. 2. Intellectual, mind death. When the vital circuits of higher adjutant ministry are disrupted through the aberrations of intellect or because of the partial destruction of the mechanism of the brain, and if these conditions pass a certain critical point of irreparability, the indwelling adjuster is immediately released to depart for Divinnington. On the universe records, the mortal personality is considered to have met with death whenever the essential mind circuits of human will action have been destroyed. And again, this is death, irrespective of the continuing function of the living mechanism of the physical body. The body minus the volitional mind is no longer human, but according to the prior choosing of the human will, the soul of such an individual may survive. 3. Physical, Body and Mind Death when death overtakes a human being, the adjuster remains in the citadel of the mind until it ceases to function as an intelligent mechanism, about the time that the measurable brain energies cease their rhythmic vital pulsations. Following this dissolution, the adjuster takes leave of the vanishing mind, just as unceremoniously as entry was made years before, and proceeds to Divinnington by way of Uversa. After death, the material body returns to the elemental world from which it was derived. But two non-material factors of surviving personality persist. The pre-existent thought adjuster, with the memory transcription of the mortal career, proceeds to Divinnington. And there also remains, in the custody of the destiny guardian, the immortal Marantia soul of the deceased human. These phases and forms of soul, these once kinetic, 
but now static formulas of identity are essential to repersonalization on the Marantia worlds, and it is the reunion of the adjuster and the soul that reassembles the surviving personality, that reconsciousizes you at the time of the Marantia awakening. For those who do not have personal seraphic guardians, the group custodians faithfully and efficiently perform the same service of identity safekeeping and personality resurrection. The seraphim are indispensable to the reassembly of personality. Upon death, the thought adjuster temporarily loses personality, but not identity. The human subject temporarily loses identity, but not personality. On the mansion worlds, both reunite in eternal manifestation. Never does a departed thought adjuster return to earth as the being of former indwelling. Never is personality manifested without the human will. And never does a disadjusted human being, after death, manifest active identity or in any manner establish communication with the living beings of earth. Such disadjusted souls are wholly and absolutely unconscious during the long or short sleep of death. There can be no exhibition of any sort of personality or ability to engage in communications with other personalities until after completion of survival. Those who go to the mansion worlds are not permitted to send messages back to their loved ones. It is the policy throughout the universes to forbid such communication during the period of a current dispensation. 4. Adjusters After Death When death of a material, intellectual, or spiritual nature occurs, the adjuster bids farewell to the mortal host and departs for Divinnington. From the headquarters of the local universe and the super-universe, a reflective contact is made with the supervisors of both governments, and the monitor is registered out by the same number that recorded entry into the domains of time. In some way not fully understood, the universal censors are able to gain possession of an epitome of the human life as it is embodied in the adjuster's duplicate transcription of the spiritual values and marantia meanings of the indwelt mind. The censors are able to appropriate the adjuster's version of the deceased human survival character and spiritual qualities, and all this data, together with the seraphic records, is available for presentation at the time of the adjudication of the individual concerned. This information is also used to confirm those super-universe mandates which make it possible for certain ascenders immediately to begin their Marantia careers upon mortal dissolution to proceed to the mansion worlds ahead of the formal termination of a planetary dispensation. Subsequent to physical death, except in individuals translated from among the living, the released adjuster goes immediately to the home sphere of Divinnington. The details of what transpires on that world during the time of awaiting the factual reappearance of the surviving mortal depend chiefly on whether the human being ascends to the mansion worlds in his own individual right or awaits a dispensational summoning of the sleeping survivors of a planetary age. If the mortal associate belongs to a group that will be repersonalized at the end of a dispensation, the adjuster will not immediately return to the mansion world of the former system of service, but will, according to choice, enter upon one of the following temporary assignments. 1. Be mustered into the ranks of vanished monitors for undisclosed service. 2. Be assigned for a period to the observation of the Paradise Regime. 3. Be enrolled in one of the many training schools of Divinnington. 4. Be stationed for a time as a student observer on one of the other six sacred spheres which constitute the Father's Circuit of Paradise Worlds. Five. Be assigned to the messenger service of the personalized adjusters. 6. Become an associate instructor in the Divinnington schools devoted to the training of monitors belonging to the Virgin Group. 7. Be assigned to select a group of possible worlds on which to serve in the event that there is a reasonable cause for believing that the human partner may have rejected survival. If, when death overtakes you, you have attained the third circle or a higher realm, and therefore have had assigned to you a personal guardian of destiny, and if the final transcript of the summary of survival character submitted by the adjuster is unconditionally certified by the destiny guardian, if both seraphim and adjuster essentially agree in every item of their life records and recommendations, if the universal censors and their reflective associates on Uversa confirm this data, and do so without equivocation or reservation, in that event, the Ancients of Days flash forth the mandate of advanced standing over the communication circuits to Salvington, 
and, thus released, the tribunals of the sovereign of Nebadon will decree the immediate passage of the surviving soul to the resurrection halls of the mansion worlds. If the human individual survives without delay, the adjuster, so I am instructed, registers at Divinnington, proceeds to the paradise presence of the Universal Father, returns immediately, and is embraced by the personalized adjusters of the super-universe and local universe of assignment, receives the recognition of the chief personalized monitor of Divinnington, and then, at once, passes into the realization of identity transition, being summoned therefrom on the third period, and on the mansion world in the actual personality form made ready for the reception of the surviving soul of the earth mortal, as that form has been projected by the guardian of destiny. 5. Survival of the Human Self Selfhood is a cosmic reality, whether material, morontial, or spiritual. The actuality of the personal is the bestowal of the Universal Father acting in and of himself or through his manifold universe agencies. To say that a being is personal is to recognize the relative individuation of such a being within the cosmic organism. The living cosmos is an all but infinitely integrated aggregation of real units, all of which are relatively subject to the destiny of the whole. But those that are personal have been endowed with the actual choice of destiny acceptance or of destiny rejection. That which comes from the Father is like the Father eternal, and this is just as true of personality, which God gives by his own free will choice, as it is of the divine thought adjuster, an actual fragment of God. Man's personality is eternal, but with regard to identity, a conditioned eternal reality. Having appeared in response to the Father's will, personality will attain deity destiny, but man must choose whether or not he will be present at the attainment of such destiny. In default of such choice, personality attains experiential deity directly, becoming a part of the Supreme Being. The cycle is foreordained, but man's participation therein is optional, personal, and experiential. Mortal identity is a transient time-life condition in the universe. It is real only in so far as the personality elects to become a continuing universe phenomenon. This is the essential difference between man and an energy system. The energy system must continue. It has no choice. But man has everything to do with determining his own destiny. The adjuster is truly the path to paradise but man himself must pursue that path by his own deciding, his free will choosing. Human beings possess identity only in the material sense. Such qualities of the self are expressed by the material mind as it functions in the energy system of the intellect. When it is said that man has identity, it is recognized that he is in possession of a mind circuit which has been placed in subordination to the acts and choosing of the will of the human personality. But this is a material and purely temporary manifestation, just as the human embryo is a transient parasitic stage of human life. Human beings, from a cosmic perspective, are born, live, and die in a relative instant of time. They are not enduring. But mortal personality, through its own choosing, possesses the power of transferring its seat of identity from the passing material intellect system to the higher Marantia soul system, which, in association with the thought adjuster, is created as a new vehicle for personality manifestation. And it is this very power of choice, the universe insignia of free will creaturehood, that constitutes man's greatest opportunity and his supreme cosmic responsibility. Upon the integrity of the human volition depends the eternal destiny of the future finaliter. Upon the sincerity of the mortal free will, the divine adjuster depends for eternal personality. Upon the faithfulness of mortal choice, the universal father depends for the realization of a new ascending son. Upon the steadfastness and wisdom of decision actions, the supreme being depends for the actuality of experiential evolution. Though the cosmic circles of personality growth must eventually be attained, if, through no fault of your own, the accidents of time and the handicaps of material existence prevent your mastering these levels on your native planet, if your intentions and desires are of survival value, there are issued the decrees of probation extension. You will be afforded additional time in which to prove yourself. If ever there is doubt as to the advisability of advancing a human identity to the mansion worlds, 
the universe governments invariably rule in the personal interests of that individual. They unhesitatingly advance such a soul to the status of a transitional being, while they continue their observations of the emerging Marantia intent and spiritual purpose. Thus divine justice is certain of achievement, and divine mercy is accorded further opportunity for extending its ministry. The governments of Orontan and Nebadon do not claim absolute perfection for the detailed working of the universal plan of mortal repersonalization, but they do claim to, and actually do, manifest patience, tolerance, understanding, and merciful sympathy. We had rather assume the risk of a system rebellion than to court the hazard of depriving one struggling mortal from any evolutionary world of the eternal joy of pursuing the ascending career. This does not mean that human beings are to enjoy a second opportunity in the face of the rejection of a first, not at all. But it does signify that all will creatures are to experience one true opportunity to make one undoubted, self-conscious, and final choice. The sovereign judges of the universes will not deprive any being of personality status who has not finally and fully made the eternal choice. The soul of man must and will be given full and ample opportunity to reveal its true intent and real purpose. When the more spiritually and cosmically advanced mortals die, they proceed immediately to the mansion worlds. In general, this provision operates with those who have had assigned to them personal seraphic guardians. Other mortals may be detained until such time as the adjudication of their affairs has been completed, after which they may proceed to the mansion worlds or they may be assigned to the ranks of the sleeping survivors who will be repersonalized en masse at the end of the current planetary dispensation. There are two difficulties that hamper my efforts to explain just what happens to you in death, the surviving you, which is distinct from the departing adjuster. One of these consists in the impossibility of conveying to your level of comprehension an adequate description of a transaction on the borderland of the physical and Maranja realms. The other is brought about by the restrictions placed upon my commission as a revelator of truth by the celestial governing authorities of Urantia. There are many interesting details which might be presented, but I withhold them upon the advice of your immediate planetary supervisors. But within the limits of my permission, I can say this much. There is something real, something of human evolution, something additional to the mystery monitor which survives death. This newly appearing entity is the soul, and it survives the death of both your physical body and your material mind. This entity is the conjoint child of the combined life and efforts of the human you in liaison with the divine you, the adjuster. This child of human and divine parentage constitutes the surviving element of terrestrial origin. It is the Marantia self, the immortal soul. This child of persisting meaning and surviving value is wholly unconscious during the period from death to repersonalization, and is in the keeping of the seraphic destiny guardian throughout this season of waiting. You will not function as a conscious being, following death, until you attain the new consciousness of Marantia on the mansion worlds of Satania. At death, the functional identity associated with the human personality is disrupted through the cessation of vital motion. Human personality, while transcending its constituent parts, is dependent on them for functional identity. The stoppage of life destroys the physical brain patterns for mind endowment, and the disruption of mind terminates mortal consciousness. The consciousness of that creature cannot subsequently reappear until a cosmic situation has been arranged which will permit the same human personality again to function in relationship with living energy. During the transit of surviving mortals from the world of origin to the mansion worlds, whether they experience personality reassembly on the third period or ascend at the time of a group resurrection, the record of personality constitution is faithfully preserved by the archangels on their worlds of special activities. These beings are not the custodians of personality, as the guardian seraphim are of the soul, but it is nonetheless true that every identifiable factor of personality is effectually safeguarded in the custody of these dependable trustees of mortal survival. As to the exact whereabouts of mortal personality during the time intervening between death and survival, we do not know. The situation which makes repersonalization possible is brought about in the resurrection halls of the Marantia receiving planets of a local universe. 
Here in these life assembly chambers, the supervising authorities provide that relationship of universe energy, morontial, mindal, and spiritual, which makes possible the re-consciousizing of the sleeping survivor. The reassembly of the constituent parts of a one-time material personality involves 1. The fabrication of a suitable form, a marancha energy pattern, in which the new survivor can make contact with non-spiritual reality, and within which the marancha variant of the cosmic mind can be uncircuited. 2. The return of the adjuster to the waiting marancha creature. The adjuster is the eternal custodian of your ascending identity. Your monitor is the absolute assurance that you yourself and not another will occupy the marancha form created for your personality awakening. And the adjuster will be present at your personality reassembly to take up once more the role of paradise guide to your surviving self. 3. When these prerequisites of repersonalization have been assembled, the seraphic custodian of the potentialities of the slumbering immortal soul, with the assistance of numerous cosmic personalities, bestows this Marancha entity upon and in the awaiting Marancha mind-body form while committing this evolutionary child of the Supreme to eternal association with the waiting adjuster. And this completes the repersonalization, reassembly of memory, insight, and consciousness, identity. The fact of repersonalization consists in the seizure of the encircuited Marancha phase of the newly segregated cosmic mind by the awakening human self. The phenomenon of personality is dependent on the persistence of the identity of selfhood reaction to universe environment, and this can only be affected through the medium of mind. Selfhood persists in spite of a continuous change in all the factor components of self. In the physical life, the change is gradual. At death and upon repersonalization, the change is sudden. The true reality of all selfhood, personality, is able to function responsively to universe conditions by virtue of the unceasing changing of its constituent parts. Stagnation terminates in inevitable death. Human life is an endless change of the factors of life unified by the stability of the unchanging personality. And when you thus awaken on the mansion worlds of Jerusalem, you will be so changed, the spiritual transformation will be so great that, were it not for your thought adjuster and the destiny guardian, who so fully connect up your new life in the new worlds with your old life in the first world, you would at first have difficulty in connecting the new Marancha consciousness with the reviving memory of your previous identity. Notwithstanding the continuity of personal selfhood, much of the mortal life would at first seem to be a vague and hazy dream, but time will clarify many mortal associations. The thought adjuster will recall and rehearse for you only those memories and experiences which are a part of, and essential to, your universe career. If the adjuster has been a partner in the evolution of aught in the human mind, then will these worthwhile experiences survive in the eternal consciousness of the adjuster. But much of your past life and its memories, having neither spiritual meaning nor marancha value, will perish with the material brain. Much of material experience will pass away as one-time scaffolding which, having bridged you over to the Marancha level, no longer serves a purpose in the universe. But personality and the relationships between personalities are never scaffolding. Mortal memory of personality relationships has cosmic value and will persist. On the mansion worlds, you will know and be known, and more, you will remember and be remembered by your one-time associates in the short but intriguing life on your Arantia. 6. The Marancha Self Just as a butterfly emerges from the caterpillar stage, so will the true personalities of human beings emerge on the mansion worlds, for the first time revealed apart from their one-time enshroudment in the material flesh. The Marancha career in the local universe has to do with the continued elevation of the personality mechanism from the beginning Marancha level of soul existence up to the final Marancha level of progressive spirituality. It is difficult to instruct you regarding your Marancha personality forms for the local universe career. You will be endowed with Marancha patterns of personality manifestability, and these are investments which, in the last analysis, are beyond your comprehension. Such forms, while entirely real, are not energy patterns of the material order which you now understand. 
They do, however, serve the same purpose on the local universe worlds as do your material bodies on the planets of human nativity. To a certain extent, the appearance of the material body form is responsive to the character of the personality identity. The physical body does, to a limited degree, reflect something of the inherent nature of the personality. Still more so does the marancha form. In the physical life, mortals may be outwardly beautiful, though inwardly unlovely. In the marancha life, and increasingly on its higher levels, the personality form will vary directly in accordance with the nature of the inner person. On the spiritual level, outward form and inner nature begin to approximate complete identification, which grows more and more perfect on higher and higher spirit levels. In the Marancha estate, the ascending mortal is endowed with the Nebadon modification of the cosmic mind endowment of the master spirit of Orvantan. The mortal intellect, as such, has perished, has ceased to exist as a focalized universe entity apart from the undifferentiated mind circuits of the creative spirit. But the meanings and values of the mortal mind have not perished. Certain phases of mind are continued in the surviving soul. Certain experiential values of the former human mind are held by the adjuster. And there persist in the local universe the records of the human life as it was lived in the flesh, together with certain living registrations in the numerous beings who are concerned with the final evaluation of the ascending mortal beings extending in range from seraphim to universal censors, and probably on beyond to the supreme. Creature volition cannot exist without mind, but it does persist in spite of the loss of the material intellect. During the times immediately following survival, the ascending personality is in great measure guided by the character patterns inherited from the human life and by the newly appearing action of Marancha Mota and these guides to Mansonia conduct function acceptably in the early stages of the Marancha life and prior to the emergence of Marancha will as a full-fledged volitional expression of the ascending personality. There are no influences in the local universe career comparable to the seven adjutant mind spirits of human existence. The Marancha mind must evolve by direct contact with cosmic mind, as this cosmic mind has been modified and translated by the creative source of local universe intellect, the divine minister. Mortal mind, prior to death, is self-consciously independent of the adjuster presence. Adjutant mind needs only the associated material energy pattern to enable it to operate. But the Marancha soul, being super-adjutant, does not retain self-consciousness without the adjuster when deprived of the material mind mechanism. This evolving soul does, however, possess a continuing character derived from the decisions of its former associated adjutant mind, and this character becomes active memory when the patterns thereof are energized by the returning adjuster. The persistence of memory is proof of the retention of the identity of original selfhood. It is essential to complete self-consciousness of personality continuity and expansion. Those mortals who ascend without adjusters are dependent on the instruction of seraphic associates for the reconstruction of human memory. Otherwise, the Marancha souls of the spirit-fused mortals are not limited. The pattern of memory persists in the soul, but this pattern requires the presence of the former adjuster to become immediately self-realizable as continuing memory. Without the adjuster, it requires considerable time for the mortal survivor to re-explore and re-learn to recapture the memory consciousness of the meanings and values of a former existence. The soul of survival value faithfully reflects both the qualitative and the quantitative actions and motivations of the material intellect, the former seat of the identity of selfhood. In the choosing of truth, beauty, and goodness, the mortal mind enters upon its pre marancha universe career under the tutelage of the seven adjutant mind spirits unified under the direction of the spirit of wisdom. Subsequently, upon the completion of the seven circles of pre-Marancha attainment, the superimposition of the endowment of Marancha mind upon adjutant mind initiates the pre-spiritual or Marancha career of local universe progression. When a creature leaves his native planet, he leaves the adjutant ministry behind and becomes solely dependent on Marancha intellect. When an ascender leaves the local universe, he has attained the spiritual level of existence, having passed beyond the Marancha level. 
This newly appearing spirit entity then becomes attuned to the direct ministry of the cosmic mind of Orvantan. 7. Adjuster Fusion Thought Adjuster Fusion imparts eternal actualities to personality which were previously only potential. Among these new endowments may be mentioned fixation of divinity quality, past eternity experience and memory, immortality, and a phase of qualified potential absoluteness. When your earthly course in temporary form has been run, you are to awaken on the shores of a better world, and eventually you will be united with your faithful adjuster in an eternal embrace. And this fusion constitutes the mystery of making God and man one, the mystery of finite creature evolution, but it is eternally true. Fusion is the secret of the sacred sphere of Ascendington, and no creature, save those who have experienced fusion with the spirit of deity, can comprehend the true meaning of the actual values which are conjoined when the identity of a creature of time becomes eternally one with the spirit of paradise deity. Fusion with the adjuster is usually effected while the ascender is resident within his local system. It may occur on the planet of nativity as a transcendence of natural death. It may take place on any one of the mansion worlds or on the headquarters of the system. It may even be delayed until the time of the constellation sojourn, or in special instances, it may not be consummated until the ascender is on the local universe capital. When fusion with the adjuster has been effected, there can be no future danger to the eternal career of such a personality. Celestial beings are tested throughout a long experience, but mortals pass through a relatively short and intensive testing on the evolutionary and mirage worlds. Fusion with the adjuster never occurs until the mandates of the super-universe have pronounced that the human nature has made a final and irrevocable choice for the eternal career. This is the at one authorization, which, when issued, constitutes the clearance authority for the fused personality eventually to leave the confines of the local universe to proceed some time to the headquarters of the super-universe, from which point the pilgrim of time will, in the distant future, and second of him for the long flight to the central universe of Avona and the deity adventure. On the evolutionary worlds, selfhood is material, it is a thing in the universe, and as such is subject to the laws of material existence. It is a fact in time and is responsive to the vicissitudes thereof. Survival decisions must here be formulated. In the Miranja state, the self has become a new and more enduring universe reality and its continuing growth is predicated on its increasing attunement to the mind and spirit circuits of the universes. Survival decisions are now being confirmed. When the self attains the spiritual level, it has become a secure value in the universe, and this new value is predicated upon the fact that survival decisions have been made, which fact has been witnessed by eternal fusion with the thought adjuster. And having achieved the status of a true universe value, the creature becomes liberated in potential for the seeking of the highest universe value, God. Such fused beings are twofold in their universe reactions. They are discrete Marantia individuals, not altogether unlike Seraphim, and they are also beings in potential on the order of the Paradise Finalitors. But the fused individual is really one personality, one being, whose unity defies all attempts at analysis by any intelligence of the universes. And so, having passed the tribunals of the local universe from the lowest to the highest, none of which have been able to identify man or adjuster, the one apart from the other, you shall finally be taken before the sovereign of Nebadon, your local universe father. And there, at the hand of the very being whose creative fatherhood in this universe of time has made possible the fact of your life, you will be granted those credentials which entitle you eventually to proceed upon your super-universe career in quest of the Universal Father. Has the triumphant adjuster won personality by the magnificent service to humanity, or has the valiant human acquired immortality through sincere efforts to achieve adjuster likeness? It is neither, but they together have achieved the evolution of a member of one of those unique orders of the ascending personalities of the Supreme one who will ever be found serviceable, faithful, and efficient, a candidate for further growth and development, 
ever ranging upward and never ceasing the supernal ascent until the seven circuits of Avona have been traversed, and the one-time soul of earthly origin stands in worshipful recognition of the actual personality of the Father on Paradise. Throughout all this magnificent ascent, the Thought Adjuster is the divine pledge of the future and full spiritual stabilization of the ascending mortal. Meanwhile, the presence of the mortal free will affords the adjuster an eternal channel for the liberation of the divine and infinite nature. Now have these two identities become one. No event of time or of eternity can ever separate man and adjuster. They are inseparable, eternally fused. On the adjuster fusion worlds, the destiny of the mystery monitor is identical with that of the ascending mortal, the paradise core of the finality and neither adjuster nor mortal can attain that unique goal without the full cooperation and faithful help of the other. This extraordinary partnership is one of the most engrossing and amazing of all the cosmic phenomena of this universe age. From the time of adjuster fusion, the status of the ascender is that of the evolutionary creature. The human member was the first to enjoy personality and therefore outranks the adjuster in all matters concerned with the recognition of personality. The paradise headquarters of this fused being is Ascendington, not Divinington, and this unique combination of God and man ranks as an ascending mortal all the way up to the core of the finality. When once an adjuster fuses with an ascending mortal, the number of that adjuster is stricken from the records of the super-universe. What happens on the records of Divinington I do not know, but I surmise that the registry of that adjuster is removed to the secret circles of the inner courts of Grand Fonda the acting head of the core of the finality. With adjuster fusion, the Universal Father has completed his promise of the gift of himself to his material creatures. He has fulfilled the promise and consummated the plan of the eternal bestowal of divinity upon humanity. Now begins the human attempt to realize and to actualize the limitless possibilities that are inherent in the supernal partnership with God which has thus factualized. The present known destiny of surviving mortals is the paradise core of the finality. This is also the goal of destiny for all thought adjusters who become joined in eternal union with their mortal companions. At present, the paradise finaliters are working throughout the grand universe in many undertakings, but we all conjecture that they will have other and even more supernal tasks to perform in the distant future after the seven super-universes have become settled in light and life and when the finite God has finally emerged from the mystery which now surrounds this supreme deity. You have been instructed to a certain extent about the organization and personnel of the central universe, the super-universes, and the local universes. You have been told something about the character and origin of some of the various personalities who now rule these far-flung creations. You have also been informed that there are in process of organization vast galaxies of universes far out beyond the periphery of the grand universe, in the first outer space level. It has also been intimated in the course of these narratives that the Supreme Being is to disclose his unrevealed tertiary function in these now uncharted regions of outer space. And you have also been told that the finaliters of the Paradise Core are the experiential children of the Supreme. We believe that the mortals of adjuster fusion, together with their finaliter associates, are destined to function in some manner in the administration of the universes of the first outer space level. We have not the slightest doubt that in due time these enormous galaxies will become inhabited universes, and we are equally convinced that among the administrators thereof will be found the paradise finaliters whose natures are the cosmic consequence of the blending of creature and creator. What an adventure! What a romance! A gigantic creation to be administered by the children of the Supreme, these personalized and humanized adjusters, these adjusterized and eternalized mortals, these mysterious combinations and eternal associations of the highest known manifestation of the essence of the first source and center and the lowest form of intelligent life capable of comprehending and attaining the Universal Father. We conceive that such amalgamated beings such partnerships of creator and creature will become superb rulers, matchless administrators, and understanding and sympathetic directors of any and all forms of intelligent life which may come into existence throughout these future universes of the first outer space level. True it is, 
you mortals are of earthly animal origin. Your frame is indeed dust. But if you actually will, if you really desire, surely the heritage of the ages is yours, and you shall some day serve throughout the universes in your true characters, children of the supreme God of experience and divine sons of the Paradise Father of all personalities. Presented by a Solitary Messenger of Orvanton